Gemini Taurus. How do they affect each other? What happens if you have your ascendant or sun in Gemini and you're interested in someone who is Taurus? So you have part of someone of the family who is a Taurus sun or moon in Taurus, for instance. But you usually know what the sun sign of another is, so you can compare the sun sign. So if you have your ascendant in Gemini, then the other person will trigger whoever who has uh, the sun in Taurus will trigger your 12th house, will, will trigger the 12th sign from Gemini, which means that he will, he's here in your life to teach you 12th house um, themes, to bring those themes into your life, to teach you lessons, where, uh, usually it happens unconsciously. But the 12th house uh, uh, is the house of letting go and relaxing. So such a person, you can learn from such a person, they can trigger in you new, uh, uh, this knowledge of how to to let go and let God, how to relax, how to take it easy, how to trust, uh, how to have more faith and how to trust in that the universe can arrange things on its own, you know, that you, you, that you cannot always make things happen with your own willpower, that sometimes you have to let go and then things arrange themselves, you know, and such people, they can teach you this in an infuriating way, for instance, they can be uh, super lazy or messy, and, uh, but you see that things in their life, you know, somehow fit together and happen, and because of that, you see this from this person and you learn this yourself. 12th house is also a very mystical house, so more evolved Tauruses uh, will affect someone with Gemini Ascendant or Sun in a more direct way by introducing him to mystical, to more spiritual, uh, to more spiritual uh, knowledge or introspection. Also, such person, uh, can, how can they affect the 12th house? is the house of spending. So such a person, such Tauruses can affect the Gemini by the Gemini spending more money on the Taurus person, or like the Taurus person be becoming like an expense on them, or the Taurus person being someone who spends, or someone like someone you meet someone who is Taurus, and this is person who spends a lot lavishly and burn and creates in you the same desire for the same similar lifestyle, or to learn how to live it a bit large, how to give. They can also teach you the value of compassion and charitability. This is again 12 house issues. And it can be because they're too vulnerable and weak and you want to take care of them, or, or somehow you just feel more compassionate towards them, or because they're somehow a victim, you see them as a victim, and they awaken in you this desire to help them, to be compassionate. Or with their own actions, they can be someone very compassionate, who helps others, who is, uh, you know, kind of, um, uh, who serves others. And in the same way, you, this, uh, or gives help or money, whatever, to others. And because of that, they can, this person, a Taurus, usually can inspire the same in you. On a more negative note, though, 12th house is a very karmic house. So usually you might have a debt towards such person who, towards, if you're a Gemini, Ascendant or Sun, you might have a debt towards someone who has their Sun in Taurus or their Moon in Taurus or a few planets in Taurus because they trigger the 12th house of old karmic relationships. So you probably had past life connection with this person and it's usually difficult karma that you have to resolve in this lifetime and end it. 12th house is the house of ending. So this person, Taurus is often, uh, not not all Tauruses. Some, some Tauruses will teach one part of the 12th house issues that I'm mentioning. Another Taurus will teach you another part. Uh, so with some Tauruses, you might, they're here to teach you how to end things. So you might have a painful separation with a Taurus or someone with strong Taurus energy in their horoscope because they're here to teach you how to let go, to, uh, to, to, to learn from this relationship how to you know, to say goodbye and how to let go of the past and move to a new level, how to lose. The 12th house is the house of losing something or uh, loss, whether it's financial, whether it's losing the person, you know. So they, they're here to teach us a bit more difficult lessons. Uh, Taurus is teach Gemini ascended people, Gemini sun people, a bit more difficult lessons. Um, as I said, less, let, loss, letting go, ending things. Um, uh, being able to reconcile losing something as well, you know, and uh, it can be painful. And also 12 houses, as I said, it's ending some karma. So often relationship with such people has some kind of a more of a fatal, um, 
slant to them as if there is not much you can do about it, as if fate takes over and you cannot control much the situation uh, with those Gemini people. And also, as I said, you are more willing to sacrifice sometimes for such people, especially if you fall in love with someone who has strong Taurus. If you're Gemini ascendant or sun, you might be willing to give more for them, to sacrifice more, to idealize them, uh, to put them on the pedestal, because 12th house is a house that uh, kind of sees through a fog, doesn't look at things too realistically. So you might not be looking at Gemini's too realistically, but if you have a... Uh, Try not to be duped, try not to be taken advantage of through by those people uh, or not to feel like a, like a victim or deluded in some way. This is in the most extreme and negative ways if a Gemini can do this to, sorry, a Taurus can do this to a Gemini ascendant person. But it's because you're paying uh, old karma, you know, with that, that person, you know. Maybe you did the same thing to this person in a past life, so he comes back in this life to do it. But in the best case scenario, as I said, this person can be your inspiration, your muse, you can put them on a pedestal. They can teach you how to dream. They can teach you about the invisible worlds, the inner sanctum of the person, how to meditate, how to uh, retreat into yourself, how to dream, how to fantasize. Maybe you have very strong sexual fantasies towards a person who has Taurus in the, the horoscope and you'll be much more willing to help them as I keep saying uh, and to and to idealize them so be careful also from that tendency but if it's your child or if it's someone close to you you might oversee their weaknesses and others might be wondering why do you still have friendship with this person why do you tol tolerate this person but you for some unknown reason you just feel more giving to that person and more forgiving you know and they're here also to teach you the value of forgiveness, the value of sacrifice, the the the, the act of sacrifice of giving and forgiving, and um, uh, yes, and paying back. <laughs> and what about if you're a Gemini, if you're a Taurus ascendant? How do Gemini people affect you? If you're Taurus, or uh, if you're Sun in Taurus, or ascendant in Taurus, then Gemini's will trigger your second house. So Gemini will be people who actually stabilize a Taurus person. So if you're feeling out of balance in your Taurus ascendant or Taurus sun, if you're feeling very unbalanced, very uh, erratic, irrational, impractical, a Taurus person can teach you how to center yourself uh, in the physical, how to center yourself into sensual, to feel, to sense, you know, the, the good food, good, uh, good uh, beautiful uh, materials, all the senses. The second house rules the five senses and uh, the material world that's around us. So a Taurus person or someone with strong Taurus influence, they can teach you lessons of materiality, how to manage your finances better, how to become more self-sufficient, uh, how to um, make better use of any kind of resources you have. It doesn't have to be always only finances, it can be any kind of uh, objects and possessions that you have. Uh, and how to have more self-worth and self-value within yourself, because second house also rules self-value and self-worth. And of course, a Taurus person can do this in the hard way for, um, sorry, a Gemini person can do this in the hard way for the Taurus person. They can do it by, uh, by bad examples, and it triggers the Gemini to become more self-sufficient, more centered into the material, more responsible, more willing to keep their responsibilities, uh, everyday responsibilities like taking care of the life, of the family, of, of uh, your bills, you know, all these kind of things, that kind of second house issues that a Taurus will help, you, sorry, that a Gemini will teach a Taurus, interestingly enough, you know, a Taurus ascendant people in particular, Gemini can really have an effect on their finances, how they handle their finances, what their attitude and relationship with the material world is, with the five senses, with the physical pleasures of enjoyment are, so a Gemini can bring a lot of physical enjoyment to a Taurus, like good food, they can, uh, Taurus, a Taurus can, can enjoy the cooking of a Gemini a lot, can enjoy the uh, the visual, uh, the, the, how a Gemini uses uh, their skills and their art in way to decorate, to make things beautiful, to, to, to indulge the five senses, you know, a Gemini can teach this Taurus. They can teach this to Taurus and also the sense of self-worth, how to value themselves more uh, and how to appreciate themselves more and in this way to attract also more money in their life, you know, more resources. So yeah, this is how Gemini and Taurus affect each other. Please write to me. Uh, do you do you accept this? Do you do you feel any kind of uh, 
Do you identify with what I'm talking about? Thank you.